Ladies and gentlemen, like I said in the beginning of this show, that uh, today my special guest will be the Honorable uh, Tehana Utuyono of the Green Party and Member of Parliament of New Zealand, the one and only that pulled out the private member's bill to restore or to bring back uh, Samoa Citizenship Act in New Zealand 1982. Without further ado, it is my pleasure and privilege to welcome you to Radio Samoa and, and also our program this afternoon. First of all, I'd like to commend you and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart on behalf of all Samoans that are listening from all corners of the world to have your time, your precious time to be here with us and speaking with us live around the world. Talo for lover and haide mai ta malole soifua when we are honorable te anau tu yono. Oh, kia ora and talo for it. Um, it's great to be here uh, today and um, sitting down, I'm down here in Wellington at the moment, it's a bit sunny outside, so it reminded me a little bit about the islands. Yes, uh, it, it, of it's course. Great to be here. Of course, indeed, it is a beautiful day up here in Auckland, and what a beautiful time to speak with you after this report from the Government Select Committee, the, the, you know, in terms of governance and admin, administration committee with this report. What a wonderful, wonderful read. And uh, I want to congratulate you for being patient on this bill. How, how do you feel at this, at this point? Well, I feel like we're another step close. So we managed to get over the uh, the first reading. Then we had the select committee process as well. And I once again want to thank everybody that submitted. There are a large number of submissions, uh, over around about twenty five thousand written submissions. But also noting that one of those submissions had submissions had seven thousand signatures to them. So a large amount of uh, of support and a large amount of interest from the communities. And that support really had an impact on the committee. Uh, I, I think members of parliament really, uh, really had to think not only <coughs> with, their, with our heads, but also with our hearts as well, to listen to the community about the impact of, of, on this law. And I, w I would like to commend our, our young people, the young people that came to the committee as well, that spoke on behalf of their parents, that spoke on behalf of their grandparents. And that for me was about understanding that there are generational impacts here. Mm. Uh, it is about uh, that uh, the older generation, but it's also about the impacts on on what it means to be Pasifika here, what it means to be Samoan here mm. in Aotearoa, New Zealand. So I would like to congratulate our, our, our young people for showing up to support uh, the older generation. Honourable, it is remarkable because, you know, the narrative of that day, you know, we ain't better off than our older generation, our grandmothers and grandfathers who didn't have the opportunity that is now presented today. Now, the select committee have completed and uh, also presented their report yesterday to parliament. Does this mean that they're looking at a, a decision? Do we have a decision now or no? Uh, what, so what the, what the process is and in, in the way that laws get passed in New Zealand, you have a first reading? Uh, then after the first reading, the bill then gets referred to a select committee, uh, and then the select committee, um, uh, the standard process is you get community and different stakeholders to come in and talk about the different implications of the piece of legislation. That is the process that we've just that we've just finished, and from that you get a kind of a steer about which way the votes are going to go around the house. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in this case, what we found with the select committee is that. There was unanimous support around that select committee table to support the bill moving to the next stage. So that the the political parties at the select committee were are uh, the Green Party, the Labour Party, New Zealand First, and the National Party. So that so it had support from all those political parties in in the select committee. It will then now go back to Parliament. So we've reported it to Parliament, and there will be a second reading. Um, so it has to get through the next step. But because we've got a positive. Uh, uh, well, a select committee report that says that, that it will get enough votes to move forward. Um, I'm confident that it will move through to the next step. Uh, then after the second reading, you have what we call the committee of the whole house until finally you have the third reading. Um, so the process is, there's a few steps to the process, but it's important that we have those steps as well to make sure that any piece of legislation, any law that we make in New Zealand 
uh, it has been analysed thoroughly. Mm -hmm. um, there has been an, uh, you know enough kind of debates being made about it from all the different political parties' perspectives to make sure that we get the best type best laws possible. Honourable, they recommend in this uh, report that uh, there should be a restoration. Secondly, uh, there should be some amendments to the Act, uh, but not to repeal the Act. Explain yeah, so this. I can talk to you a little bit about that. So, we there, um, if people recall from the first reading, all of the political parties around the House supported it, except for the, except for the National Party, uh, and of course. All the other other parties also had concerns about about what the implications would be um, in terms of the flow-on effects if you repeal something from uh, uh, from from 1982, for example. Uh, but the primary intent was around supporting that citizenship from from the original cohort. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so that that primary intention has been met. What we did hear. Um, from the from the submissions is that people wanted to widen it to uh, their children as well. Mm -hmm. So that is something that both uh, us and the Greens and the Labour Party supported, but that part did not get support around the select committee table. Yeah, um, around opening it up to not just the, the those people that were directly impacted, but also their their children, mm -hmm. uh, which would have given it. Uh, we, we estimate around about fifteen thousand to nineteen thousand people as as well. So that didn't get support. There is another opportunity for amendments to be made to the legislation, what we call the Committee of the Whole House stage. Yep. But my feeling is that it would require one of the government parties to actually indicate that they would support that type of change. Uh, we uh, we wanted to do a hard repeal, both myself and the Labour Party, uh, and the reason was uh, around trying to to strike the law from the, from the books. Um, but the countervailing uh, argument was uh, that there are other things which leak in, let's leak in from uh, the from that act through to the uh, the Treaty of Friendship, and so impacts on the protocol um, were considered, uh, and then also what that would mean in terms of uh, of actually having a piece of legislation where people could directly refer to uh, the impacts on on Samoa. Yeah. So the count the 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 amendment that ended up with the majority that was everybody else is it for most um the greens and labor was to do an amendment yep. so it's not a hard repeal but there's still amendments being made amending the title but then also making sure that the that the pieces of um the flow through uh clauses which support the treaty of friendship remain in order to al and allow preferential access into New Zealand, mm -hmm. uh, but then also to find a way to make sure that we do something for that citizenship pathway for the elders. <coughs> but the other thing too, you know, a lot of our, our, our Samoan community didn't know the 1977 Protocol Act still allows us, and it's still a live and and uh, uh, part of the legislation that we can always go through through that process. But what I'm telling you, Honourable, I'm so glad that if we go back and do the amendments for those people that were born between 1924 and 1949, despite the fact that they have the first generation, I'm, 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 I'm rather happy and so happy, so that this target number of people and the Amendment Act restored for those citizens first. What do you, what's your take on that? Well, I'm glad that that got through, and I'm glad that the select <laughs> committee supported that perspective as well, because that came through. That came through loud and loud and clear, and I'm, I'm I'm certainly happy that government members, in particular, kind of heard that message from the community to make mm -hmm. sure that we that that is supported. Um, and I think what that indicates is respect. What that I think that indicates is integrity. Uh, uh, one of the strong submissions came through from the Pacific Lawyers Association, and they talked about if you're going to um, to find a pathway to restitution or, uh, or or the like, then it's important that there's a flow through and a practical material impact, mm -hmm. um, and it does that. And so it's satisfied on that test. Uh, I mean, uh, but I would say that is a step. Uh, amongst the, a long journey, and I want to acknowledge that many people in the Samoan community have been pushing and organising for years uh, to get some sort of justice. Yeah, uh, and so this is just another step on that on that journey towards justice. 
And the other thing too, uh, Honorable, it is quite important because so don't we don't cast a doubt over the descendants of these people that were born in, at that time so that they can go ahead without, you know, uh, the normal application through citizenship. And this piece of legislation is particularly carved out for them so that there's no doubt because the implications is very, um, it, it's going to be a heavy burden in terms of New Zealand's economy. So we're, I'm, to me, myself, individually, personally, I'm quite happy just to let our parents that were born at that particular time deal with this. Oh, that's, yeah, uh, and, I, and I'm, I'm glad that that's, I'm glad that that got over the line as well. I mean, they've got support around the select committee tab. There's more work to be done. Uh, and you'll, if you read, go through the report, there are also, because it was brought up around uh, visa conditions um, as well. Uh, visa conditions are actually dealt with them through the Ministry for Immigration. So that's out of the scope for this piece of legislation. But it was certainly noted by the select committee that actually there needs to be something that needs to happen so that people can come and go more easily and freely between New Zealand and Samoa, I think that would be appropriate. The funny thing is, uh, Honourable, <clears throat> we were, they were just not Samoans. We were not the only ones that uh, sent in, you know, um, um, sub verbal submissions and also written submissions. There were a lot, thousands of non-Samoans who supported us on this bill, and I'm grateful for these non-Samoans. They've seen the pain that we've gone through throughout the years, and they were happy to lend a, a shoulder to, to, to support this one. How, what's your, what's your uh, advice in, in, in how this relationship has developed throughout the years and non-Samoans helping out Samoans with their, with their fight? Oh, well, certainly that's, the, that's, that's certainly true for me. Uh, I'm from the Cook Islands, the Machuan, um, and I grew up with um, many Samoans who are the same generation of me, and I think of Fa'adana, Fessel Collins, Lotu Fully, uh, Tao Pritchard, a whole lot of my other friends. Um, and so for me, it's about supporting a generation of people who I grew up with, a generation of people who have uh, who are Pacifica born here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, but have those connections in islands. And I think it's always really, really important that we support each other in, in, mm. our, in our different ways. One of the very strong groups, when I went around the country to talk uh, to people who would reach out to me and say that they really supported this bull, was Māori. Mm. Māori uh, would routinely get in contact with me, talk with me, saying that they, they supported this bill as well. And noting that the Māori Party were very quick to support this bill as well. Mm. So the second reading of this, you know, the vote is, uh, you know, it's not a conscience vote. It's a party vote, not a conscience vote. Uh, can you explain that? Uh, so uh, so what what will happen with this bill in particular, because you do have conscience votes, but this isn't a conscience issue uh, per se. Um, and so parties are, will indicate and usually block and uh, vote in blocks. Having the support in particular from the National Party through the Select Committee report shows that there is support from the National Party to move it through to the next stage. Right. So I'm happy about happy about that. Um, uh, it, it'll be exactly the same as the first reading in terms of the way that the votes are cast. Uh, the thing is, with the first reading, I had no idea who was going to support or not. Mm. Uh, with the Select Committee report, it gives a very, very clear signal that there is support uh, at least from all the political parties that were at the uh, represented at the select committee, um, and so if that if the support that has been expressed in the select committee follows through, and it should uh, uh, through to the second reading, then that will be then it will pass the second reading. So that, if, like, if if, if you if this private members bill, you know, uh, is not supported by the majority, so at the second reading. Does this mean it could end there? It, it would. It would end there. But um, but but uh, uh, the thing I would highlight is the select committee report has the support of the Green Party, the Labour Party, New Zealand First Party, and the National Party. So that is a lot of votes. That's enough. That's more than a. That's more than a majority for it to get through the House, and that's a very very strong signal. Um, that there will be support at the second reading. 
Just just take us through to the recommendation of the the, the report. Uh, just briefly outline uh, what's in store and and there and and is there still a lot of work to be done. There could potentially be some work to be done uh, because there's all these different stages. So it'll get through the second second reading. So the job of the select committee has now ended because they've reported back to the House. We'll have the second reading and then we'll actually at that point get a clear indication from different political parties about what their uh, about whether they might want to propose some new amendments. Mm -hmm. So within the select committee, you'll see there's a whole lot. There was a bunch of amendments that were made. Um, it was supported unanimously to continue, but there were also some amendments there that uh, that were lost. So, for example, there's an amendment there around having zero fees in terms of of of, of applying. Yeah. Uh, so that could be that could be debated again at the at the next stage after the second reading. So that could happen at the uh, at the committee of the whole house. Uh, and what uh, and so we will hear from parties at the second reading whether they might intend to do that and what that looks like in practice is people put up what we call amendment papers these used to be called supplementary order papers uh, which might want to further amend the bill um, so for example um, if it continues to be a live issue around expanding it to 15,000 people the children mm. um, and get support from a government party mm -hmm. uh, because both Labour and the Greens have already supported that uh, then that then that could uh, change amend the bill further mm. so uh, as we met before and uh, you you can see the community of Samoa is still you know vying to to um, have connections to these um, political parties and and their leaders and caucuses do you think that is appropriate for us to keep on pushing to these different ideologies of um, of uh, political parties, well, I think so. I think it's 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 up to every community to engage the the representatives and the parliament to push for what they want, um, and then parties will respond appropriately according to whatever their policy agenda uh, policy agenda is. I mean, I certainly have have responded to that when I put originally put the bill in the in the biscuit tin. I was really only thinking about the older generation. I wasn't thinking too much far beyond that. And then mm. at the select committee, I heard, "Well, actually, have you considered about widening it for the children, uh, for the you know, for the direct, the, for the, the you know, the primary family, which would make it around about fifteen and nineteen thousand? I actually hadn't thought about that, but that's the the good thing about what happens at the select committee because you hear things that you don't know, and then you can well, actually, well, that's a good idea. Well, let's change, let's change it a little bit. Or well, that's not a good idea. Um, so we're going to make these changes. Um, and if you get enough votes around the table, it's all about votes at the end of the day. Then you can put amendments forward in your act. That is You're so beautiful to hear that uh, the national has uh, supported to get the bill over to the next. Uh, to the next step and if you look at the recommendation and the report from the the governance and administration select committee it is almost a full act and full piece of legislation because it arrives to the last point of actually recommending how much to pay for the application fee yeah 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 it does <laughs> um, and, and yeah that, i mean that uh, i mean we, there was an interesting discussion and i wasn't too sure where i was going to go with that actually because uh, i there, there's a there's an important part about justice around well actually if you've taken citizenship of people then you shouldn't make them pay for it so there's one part but then i was also worried about any um delays to the commencement of the bill mm -hmm. so if you don't if you, my understanding listening to the 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 government officials like if you don't specify that then they, it, they can't roll it out immediately which yeah. means people wouldn't be able to apply straight away um so uh, both myself and, and and the Labour Party. The Labour Party did this part, um, and I and, and I supported them a bit later on. And my uh, and that was well, actually, it's just have 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 no fees. But at the end of the day, with that particular part, that that part there, that could be a call from. It will have to be a call from cabinet. So cabinet yeah. could actually go. Um, well, actually, we want to have this amount of money, or no, or no amount of fees, um, and so they could make that call pretty, pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. But I think the the majority, in particular, the the government members, were like, well, actually, if we've got something there, that means as soon as it becomes law, people can apply. Do you think, with your vision right now, as this bill 
the private members bill of yours has been pushed forward, would you see the end result that this will be laid to rest finally at some point? Uh, I, I expect that once we get it through the next um, second reading, that we should and and we get an indication about whether political parties will pull amendment papers up or not, uh, that it will get over the line for the third reading. Um, but but then also, I, what I would also say is that there's still more work to be work done. to be done. This mm. bill is just one part. Mm -hmm. There is a question around uh, the uh, on different visa conditions, and we've we've pushed around decoupling visa conditions and in the, in the sense that it can be com quite punitive if you're coming over from Samoa and, for example, on an RSC visa and you get your job gets taken out by like a climate-induced event like Cyclone Gabriel or or or, or, or you have a, a situation where you have an exploitative uh, workplace, uh, then then that, that I think that there's more work to be done there. Uh, that is actually outside of the scope of this bill, so this mm -hmm. bill won't do everything. It only does one part. Does it just does one one step as well? So there will be there will always be more work to be done. Absolutely, and I'm sure that the community that are listening uh, are are grateful for the work that you have done and pushed through through Parliament and also your parliamentarian colleagues and and even the, the prime minister as well because i know you're going to have a consultation after this bill is passed or pushed through to be to be royal assented the two governments are still going to negotiate on other matters yeah yeah that's definitely i think that will definitely is on the cards all right all right to stay away from um from the the restoration of the citizenship act now you've heard of what has happened in samoa with the the sinking of that uh, hmns uh, manawanui yeah. as a green you know co-leader of the party that are very into your uh, the the what a change climate change and also the environmental and disasters that could uh, destroy the natural um, the natural economy and environment of Samoa, and especially the the water and the sea. What's mm. your take on that? Well, first of all, I'm I'm uh, relieved, and I think we all will are relieved that actually people got off the off the boat safe. And safe. Um, so I want to acknowledge the work of the emergency services in Samoa and assisting getting people off the boat and uh, off the sh off the ship off to Manawanui, and that's important. I think that's that is. So, uh, that is something for us to be relieved about. That is something we uh, we have to be grateful about. I am worried about the cleanup, uh, about the impact on on the environment. And I was reading one news story which talked about them being able to smell diesel just off the shore as well. So that's a concern. Uh, m my thinking is that New Zealand should step up and help to clean up. Mm. Um, and I think that will happen, but it has to happen um, quickly to contain the situation because this is, you know, potentially a massive environmental disaster right on the doorstep of Samoa. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, um, so making sure that it is contained, I think, uh, exactly how, how you have said around making sure that we protect the environment, that we uh, look after the reef is crucially important. Do you think the, the New Zealand government should take full responsibility for this, not only monetary, um, you know, in, in terms of uh, financial and environmental uh, cleanup and everything else? Because it has affected the economy, affected the livelihood of Samoa with the ocean, the, the beaches that has affected tourism, affected trading, um, and everything is, 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 is affected, uh, um, Honorable Tuyon. I think that would be appropriate. That would be absolutely appropriate to do that. Um, get in there quickly, clean it up, uh, to make sh and make to make sure that that environment is looked after. Uh, I would agree with that sentiment. Well, if there's anything that I, I've um, I haven't asked you to, that you think you might be able or or happy to to share with us, uh, I'll give you this uh, wonderful time to you know. Well, um, just. I'd really like to thank the community for getting on board and supporting uh, supporting this bill for being uh, to being heard at the select committee. That was so important to have your voices uh, being heard as well. It had a it had a really big impact. It had a profound impact. Uh, I know that when many of 
many people came to the select committee and shared their stories, shared their hearts, that that had an impact on, on members of parliament in terms of their thinking and the way that they would support this bill as well. So I am grateful. I'm grateful to everybody that's listening today. I'm grateful for you walking on this journey. Um, uh, and there is more work to be done. Uh, and I look forward to working with you to continue to do that work. I want to thank you, uh, Honourable Tuyono, on behalf of all our Samoan listeners in, in Auckland, New Zealand, and around the globe, uh, and even in Samoa, they're watching us uh, as we conversate with the, the bill, the restoration of the citizenship uh, of, of Samoa 1982. Thank you kindly from my heart, and I hope that I will catch up with you again at some point as this issue progresses through the second reading and even to the third and the royal assent. God bless, and thank you so much again, once again. Thank you, everybody.